Now welcome to another Weekend Ramble, where this time the topic is going to be... I want to compare the success of Dune to the Star Wars franchise in modern movies. Okay. Yeah. I know, I'm like, here's a deep topic. Yeah, I kind of did a video a little bit about that the other day, but yeah. I'll probably be a little different. You will be a little different. (laughs) So, first off, I found an interview with filmmaker Denis Villeneuve. He is obviously the director of the Dune movies. Very successful, riding high right now. Movies were great. Beautiful to look at, all that jazz. Yeah, yeah. Did very well in the theaters. Very, very well. Yes, they're they're chugging along pretty well. And he did an interview with the Times of London where he said, Frankly, I hate dialogue. Dialogue is for theater, is in stage theater, and television. I don't remember movies because of a good line. I remember movies because of a strong image. I'm not interested in dialogue at all. Pure image and sound, that is the power of cinema. But it is something not obvious when you watch movies today. Um, like, is he suggesting no dialogue at all? He believes, he believes that movies have been corrupted by television. I would love to hear him elaborate on that. Okay, I have another quote then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Describing his ideal situation, he said... In a perfect world, I'd make a compelling movie that doesn't feel like an experiment, but does not have a single word in it either. People would leave the cinema and say, wait, there was no dialogue, but they won't feel the lack. Yes, he wants to make a silent movie that is so perfect that you walk out of the theater not realizing that they did not speak. Well, once upon a time, there were, (laughs) until the talkies came along. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's really interesting, because obviously Dune is such a complex movie, and he did an amazing job in the cinematography. That is not anything anyone can yeah, but if, deny. But there's if nobody had talked in that movie, you may have walked out of it going, it was you would get bored, wouldn't you? I feel like that... I think I'd get bored in about ten minutes, to be completely honest with you. I mean, yeah, it's great to look at, but if I don't know what the story is... Mm-hmm. And I'm not, I'm not saying you couldn't do something visually... That keeps you entertained. and But that's not what Dune was. Like, Dune is so complex. Like, to not know the motivations of these characters would just be like them. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think that's a That think movie a would be too to hard to do without dialogue because of the complex political environment. You would have to do something very specifically mm-hmm. simple, yet beautiful, and that you could infer a lot of things and kind of mm-hmm. What's come to your own conclusions. What's interesting is and, when I hear him talk about this... I actually think about Godzilla minus one. Okay. How they used silence so well. How they said so much without saying overtly a lot at times. Yeah. That there were a lot of times that through cinematography, through wonderful, wonderful actors and a very competent director, obviously, that they were able to pull off a lot without being said. It's the show don't tell that is so important that we should be able to, as an audience, I mean, even as human beings, how much information do we infer just through our senses without speaking to people? Yeah. And if you can pull that off on camera, it adds a whole nother depth, you know, a whole nother layer to cinema. Yeah. And I I kind of think that that's more of what he's saying rather than literally not speaking. Yeah, I, I agree with him. I think we may have lost something as of late. In terms right. television, of like, yeah. they have a limited point of time, so they literally tell you everything. They have to say everything out loud that, to keep the movie soaring, going at a, at a brisk pace. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like television or, or streaming, whatever you want to call it, series is your average series on whatever network or wherever you might watch it. Like, I feel like it's evolved into something, I don't want to say beyond movies, but something completely different. Like, mm-hmm. I, I see them as two very separate things, because as you're kind of saying, like, Shows have the time to do whatever they need to do or want to do. They they can draw things out. They can spend time, just have a whole episode of, you know, characterization that really mm-hmm. doesn't take the story anywhere where you're just kind of sitting around. There's been a couple shows where I can kind of remember, like, just episodes where you're, you really don't do anything, but you get to know the characters so well, and you took an hour, and you're like, a movie could never do something like that. Right. They have to keep going. Yeah. What's interesting is there's a, there's a big debate because there is, like, a counterpoint to this. In, like, 2018, Ethan Hawke, who's a director, obviously, he used to be an actor, he made a big to-do about the, the movie industry. He said, this drives me crazy. Every film school you go to, they always teach 
cinematography. They say it's a visual medium, and it is a visual medium. If you think about the history of cinema and how many great film directors were cinematographers, not very many, actually. If you think about it and go, how many great filmmakers are actors, it's a lot. Woody Allen, Orson Welles, Spike Lee, Warren Beatty, Charlie Chaplin, Robert Redford. He's got a point. More and more actors are becoming directors. And of course they're going to focus on things like dialogue because they're actors. This is their background. Their background isn't cinematography, which is what people generally will go to film school for. I mean, I I agree that films can be more cinematic than they have. There's that part of me that, you know, I, I enjoy the MCU. You know, I love superhero movies, but I, a lot of the times they don't feel very cinematic anymore. Like, it feels like, like the longer... they've scaled down? Yeah. Well, not that they've scaled down, but they try... They don't... They, they just feel like you put a bunch of really cool, strange things on the screen, and that's cinematography. Right. I look at something like Ant-Man, Quantumanium, and I'm like, that's not cinematography. You just got some digital guy... <laughs> digital you, bright you, colors. Yeah, you got yeah. some digital, you know, person, man, woman, whatever it is, sitting in a cubicle somewhere doing these you know just making these backgrounds up like i don't really think of that as cinematography but what's interesting is comparing these two trains of thought to what disney tried to do with the sequels everyone says that the the last jedi horrible movie but the cinematography well, but yes yeah cinematography though was really good yeah it was pretty good the visuals you know, on that the... really could stick with you they were epic they were huge they were ruined by a poor story that surrounded it in some opinions yeah there's some good visuals there's some mm-hmm. some good stuff in in that department it's just yeah it, it's ruined by a story that's kind of nonsensical so, which is kind of ironic because mm-hmm. shouldn't the cinematography have just trumped all well maybe it did because he's one of those who wasn't an actor first he went to film school you know he he emerged out of the era of everyone goes to film school and learns cinematography and what's that he's putting the epic shots in there, but then our dialogue and our story is a mess. So where is the line drawn? Are we now to presume that maybe actors who go into film are making good products that are maybe supposed to be considered for TV because they excel at things like dialogue because of their acting background? But where does that leave cinematography? Well, I think oftentimes cinematography is only good because it makes sense because of the story, because Mm -hmm. of the actors have brought you there. I mean, I, there's that shot towards the end of Dune, too, and I don't want to, want to spoil it, but, you know, during I'll, I'll just say during the final fight, there's this really cool shot, and you're like, that only works because you, you know the two characters and you know the stakes, and it just it mm-hmm. adds something, you know, really nice to it, but if it were just two guys in front of a, a sunset, basically, you're like, oh, that looked cool, but it doesn't but really it. mean anything, yeah. I wonder if a new train of thought would be, what would, what would it be like if you paired together great cinematic filmmakers with these actors who've turned director? Like, what kind of movie would you get if, let's say, creator of Dune decided, let's let them work together with someone like an Ethan Hawke, whereas one of them can bring these, these are these big epic shots, these are this, and the other one goes, well, here's my dialogue, and they can kind of balance out how much dialogue is too much dialogue, how much work are the actors going to be able to pull off to successfully portray things without having the extra dialogue? I don't know. I feel like you're going to have a lot of butting of heads. Yeah, probably. I'm just curious, which direction should Star Wars go for the movies? I'm worried that the Mandalorian Grogu is going to be too much like an extended version of the Mandalorian yeah, Grogu, which is going to be a long episode of the that's, Mandalorian. That's and that's exactly not, what, what I'm expecting. That's not what yeah. I want with a bigger from a budget. theater experience. If it's something that I would be fine watching at home, I'd rather watch it at home and just put it up on Disney+. Plus. I don't want resources squandered and wasted going, here's the next thing going out in the theater for Star Wars. And it not feeling like it belongs in the movie theater. Well, I mean, Lucas always wanted Star Wars to be visually, you know, awe-inspiring, really. I mean, look mm-hmm. at the first shot of Star Wars. You know, the Star yeah. Destroyer and the flying over your head, basically. I right. mean, there's a lot, a lot of things in Star Wars that are very, you know, that is that's what you think of. I think that's why sometimes Star Wars has a hard time transitioning to the smaller screen for people. Because they expect it to feel very epic and... Mm-hmm. and grandiose. Yeah. I do wonder if Star Wars will now try to recruit him to make a Star Wars movie. We can set it on Tatooine. He's already familiar with sand. It's great. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the future holds because you have to have... I, I think, you know, it's a different topic, but it's in the same wheelhouse because, you know, shows and streaming services just 
feel more like you get more out of them these days, right? I feel so, yeah. Like a lot of times you go to a movie and it's like, oh, two hours, and you just feel like, oh, if this could have been a show, this would be. All. I don't know how many times I've <laughs> thought that. Like, oh, if that had been a show, that could have been really cool because you, I think you have want something a little and, more, yeah. yeah. Make a nice episodic, longer term adventure rather than this was only an hour and a half, only two hours. I wish it was longer, yeah. Yeah. Then the cinematography or just the the movie going experience wasn't enough to like mm-hmm. justify it being what it is. If Could that makes streaming sense. streaming have ruined that? I mean, it used to be like a half hour TV stre- show used to just be like that was it. Yeah, I think you streaming has... a short adventure, and that was small, self-contained stories. I don't think it's ruined it, but it's changed everything. I don't think people want to acknowledge just how much streaming has just changed the game. It's changed entertainment. It's mm-hmm. just changed everything about it. I agree. I agree. Because, yeah, I mean, growing up, like, most of the things I watched were half-hour or hour-long shows that really were self-contained little stories. And you didn't really, like, oh, I wish they would, you know... Be more serialized adventures. Mm-hmm. No, you were you were fine with the episodic nature of them because you didn't, you know, you didn't have the other option really, unless you're watching like a soap opera or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. And uh, they weren't worried about cinematography in those. No, not at all. Not at all. I don't know. It's, it's an interesting discussion. I, I tend to disagree with them, but at the same time, I do think movies. You know, some of these movies, not all movies, need to be these masterpieces of you know visual spectacles, whatever. But I do tend to agree. If you're gonna make a movie nowadays, it has to be something worth going to the theater beyond like look at all the cgi yeah i just I, I, that's where marvel has really lost me it's just like the over-reliance on cgi is just nauseating at times here's a fun fact so when they were filming lord of the rings some of the landscapes in new zealand were so majestic they actually had to digitally remove some of the majestic nature of <laughs> like there were some of the places they, they had like beautiful waterfalls are like that's a little too many waterfalls and they cut some of them out that's crazy mm-hmm. that's something i really I've need heard. to get to new zealand someday <laughs> it's on my list of places i would just love to go i would do it'd be fantastic yeah i'd get my second breakfast but anyway that's all we got for you this time so now it is your turn to take to the comments below and let us know what you think about this topic and let's talk some film and until next time thanks for watching